Hey there, art freaks. Welcome back. So if you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that a couple of weeks ago, I unearthed these ancient colored sumi blocks that I got um, probably close to 15 years ago when I was still a baby college student. And initially, I'll show you a picture later when we compare the swatches. Initially, when I found them, they had not been taken very well care of. I think they were bouncing around with my box of charcoal for a while, so they were pretty gross. I ground them down on my stone on all sides to clean them up a little bit and thought that I would do a little practice painting with them. Uh, if you follow me, I'm sure you're really sick of seeing this image by now, but I needed a sketch that was already done and was low effort, and this one was there for me. So, if you don't know anything about Sumi, they're a traditional Japanese type of ink. The whole process is actually referred to Sumi, Sumi E. It's Sumi dash E, but in Japanese they pronounce it differently. Wait a second. Sumi E. Sumi E. There you go. Sumi E. Eh. I'm not saying that right. I can't pronounce Japanese. I am so sorry, Japanese people. As I was saying, the sumi part is the ink. Traditionally, it only comes in black. I've been poking around a lot and I'm not actually even certain where these colored blocks came from. I mean, I bought them online, I know where they came from, but I can't find any references to them traditionally being colored, just black. And it seems like the entire point of sumiya is to not use color it's to balance your blacks and your whites and your grayscale so yeah i feel like these are probably just a gimmick but they're an interesting gimmick i remember being obsessed with these when i was in my uh, second year of my associate's degree if you see that red is like half gone i used the crap out of that red they come in a solid block. They're pigment and either pine resin or hide glue. I'm not gonna lie, I have absolutely no idea what these are. They do get sticky when wet, but they don't smell like pine. So I am guessing this particular set is animal is hide glue. And then you wet this little rectangular stone. Mine's pretty, I don't know geometrical <laughs> most of the stones i've seen are a little bit more rounded and organic edged but it has a slant in there that can collect water and ink and you wet the stone and you grind the block in a circular motion up against the stone to make the ink i've shown you this one color in real time so you can get a sense for actually how long a process this is I find it really meditative, some people find it very tedious, but it is what it is. And from all appearances in traditional sumiya, you would be only grinding the black this way. So I'm not sure what the color is in some Japanese watercolor paintings and mokoliro. I think that's probably Gansai, but I just personally have not done enough research. This was literally just nostalgia all over the place this weekend. I'm going to speed up the rest of the grinding process because like I said, it's, it's meditative to do. It's a little tedious to watch, but I have found 10 colors that I had. I for some reason thought that I initially had a set of 12 and that I was only missing two but then when I went to try to find these online again um, everything was coming up that looked like these blocks was coming up in sets of 15 so I'm gonna show you one of the sets I found in a minute here after we're done grinding and after we're done comparing swatches but it looks like I'm probably missing about five colors and you think you'll agree with me that the colors I'm missing are kind of vital because the only green I have that I can find right now is this really annoying green that I hate. 
it's I, it's a pastel green. It's gross. It's just a gross green. It was pretty gross before I cleaned it and I swatched them. And I actually think I liked it better because at least it had some gray and some grit to it. Now it's just a gross light pastel -y green. Uh, the one brown here is kind of a peachy, very light brown. It's not even really a brown. It's actually more like a desaturated gray orange. The yellows are pretty close together. Um, after cleaning, you can see more of a difference in them. It looks like it's supposed to be something like a cad light, cad medium, and yellow ochre, but they're just really close together and they don't mix substantially different from each other, which is the other thing. I don't know if you're supposed to mix colored sumi. I don't know if colored sumi is even supposed to exist. So, tried to mix them, meh, meh, it's all right. And I know you can't compare them to Western watercolor because they're two different beasts. A lot of people did that when Gansai paints hit the Western market big. Um, but you, they're not the same thing. Gansai and watercolor are not the same thing. Sumi and watercolor are not the same thing. But they're still just not great to work with now that I've had more experience working with different ink and paint type mediums than 15 years ago when I was a little baby artist. There you can see my initial swatches and what the Sumi sticks looked like, Sumi blocks really, they're not really sticks, what they looked like before I ground them down. They have these little gold dragons on that, not embossed, what's the episode embossed? Like relief sculptured on them and painted in gold. From what I can tell, that's actually normal and traditional with Sumi. So what's interesting is you get a little bit of that sparkly mica ground in. Just a tiny, tiny hint. Just enough to give like the barest little sparkle to your painting slash drawings. But you can see they were pretty grungy. Um, they clean up really nice. You kind of... Almost can't see that white on camera now. It was really gray before I cleaned the block and I was pretty happy with how much the block cleaned up and you can see when I, I flipped the block at the beginning, it's not perfect, it's not 100%. The sticks have cracked over the years and gotten dirt into the cracks so I realized I was never going to get them clean but the white is significantly less gray than it was uh, when I first unearthed these and first ground and swatched them before cleaning. This is the set I was talking about that I can find online. I found these on some Chinese uh, painter websites. I found this on eBay. So I appear to be missing the black, a dark green, a sort of turquoise-ish color, a middle green, and a light blue. So it seems like Rather than going with warms and cools, the set was kind of catered towards giving you three, like a light, a medium, and a dark of yellow, blue, and green. I, If anybody knows if that has anything to do with Japanese color theory, I would love to know because it strikes me as a little bit odd when I realized it, that you don't get like a... A red yellow blue type of triad going on and then on top of the light middle dark of the um, yellow blue and green you've got a white and a black a red a kind I guess what's supposed to be like a brownish color a violet and a magenta one other little thing to point out here before we get to the painting I struggled to get my camera to focus so I don't know how much you can pick up on camera but this had, in the little right-hand corner there, you can see it was like a chunk of unground, unmixed pigment. It was a chunk of blue, not green, literal blue. And then I noticed some on the stone, too, that I couldn't get the camera to focus on real well. So that was one quality thing about these sticks that I wasn't crazy about is there were, I noticed this later in other blocks, too, there were just little chunks of pigment. So now we're going to get to the speed paint of this little lamprey mouthed 
punches for the five millionth time. I promise you I'm done with this image after this. It's time to move on to bigger and better distortions of my children's faces for art. A little bit of a different approach to painting skin tones for me is I decided to get all fancy and go in with an underpainting with a blue thinking that I could layer up that brownish burnt sienna-ish color and make it push its value range a little bit more. This was not a good approach. You'll see later at one point I actually grind up some more of that color and layer it on top of the swatch to see how well it layers and that is how I would recommend trying to darken these colors. I also go in with some blue and purple on the hair to try to darken it up. These Sumi Sticks value ranges are best created when you layer the color on top of itself. They don't lift terribly easily because they are ink, so they're pretty staining, which means that you can glaze and layer with them really well. Not at all like Western watercolors, where most of them lift and glazing is usually a limited affair. Which on the one hand is great because it makes life a little bit easier, especially since that stone can only hold one color at a time unless and you have to mix the ink up and then put it onto a separate plate or something if you want to have multiple colors going. On the other hand, it's a really different way of working than most Western watercolor painters are used to. So there's some learning curve there, although I'm honestly not sure it's worth it because the just the... Some of the quality stuff that I'll talk about later just wasn't worth it to me. I'm not sure these are a thing I'm going to be reintroducing on the regular to my practice. And layering that blue also gave the skin tone kind of a grayish cast that I was not a fan of. Again, glazed and layered gray, but because they're staining, but because they are semi-transparent, it was just not a good look overall. Nor when I tried to layer some red into the shirt to create some different tones and bring some color in, and not when I put the purple into the hair. They move okay in water. There are no core paints, but you know, not many things are core other than core. I'm not sure I was going with that. They move okay. It's not great. It's pretty typical water-based media movement when you wet the paper first. Speaking of the paper, I realized as I'm recording this voiceover that I majorly fudged up here. Because sumi is a traditional Japanese medium, it is meant to be used on rice paper. I'm using Strathmore, Strathmore's Imperial 140 pound hot press. That is not even remotely close to what you're supposed to use sumi on. So yeah, your mileage may vary if you actually use proper sumi techniques and proper sumi colors and proper sumi materials. I got the got the paint sticks and I got the grinding stone and I got the sumi brushes, but the paper is completely inappropriate for what I'm doing. Okay, sorry, please. My best solution. <laughs> Come on, come on. That's not what I said. <laughs> believe, believe what I meant. You should upload uh, your singing because I love your singing. And you're I the, watch this video over and over. You're literally the only one who likes my singing. Do you know what happened the last time I tried to sing to Titania? 
<laughs> she tried to eat me. <laughs> okay? The dog that howls at random hours does not like my singing. <laughs> Can I provide a counterpoint? What? She will literally eat dirt off the ground, so she obviously has no taste. <laughs> So after I finished painting, or as finished as I was going to be because I was unhappy with what was going on, I just went in with a dip pen and some India ink. India ink, traditionally soot and liquid suspended medium, sumi ink, black sumi ink, uh, is traditionally soot and pine resin, so pretty close. I just didn't have any black sumi on hand or any soot and pine resin, so I reached for the liquid ink. And we're going to have a very Manda typical disaster right about now. When will I learn, friends? When will I learn? So there you have it. I didn't finish inking it on purpose because I wanted to show the back and forth between inking and just leaving your pencil underneath. I don't know what would have been done traditionally in sumi painting because this whole thing seems like it's a not traditional not traditional materials or well it's definitely not traditional paper not sumi ink doesn't traditionally come colored so i just wanted to give you a little bit of both leaving the pencil and this was a pretty substantially dark sketch as you could see in the beginning versus inking the final for a more illustrated type of look versus a more mm, that hard pencil line's not really realistic but it's more realistic than the black ink lines so the colors are bright the colors are honestly I, I don't know how else to put this other than they're just ink colors they look like I painted with ink which is what I did I don't like the look of painting with ink <laughs> it's got a very unnatural un yeah, because a lamprey mouth is so freaking natural, Amanda. It's just, I don't like it. I don't like the saturation and the hues of the colors. I'm not a big fan. What am I doing with the camera? Oh, I'm trying to show you that that green doesn't even hardly show up on camera because it's gross. I don't think it's showing up on camera, just how ugly the screen is. What? So there you have it. If you've seen these colored sumi sticks around online anywhere, if you've been curious what they look like and how they handle after 15 years of bouncing around in a box with charcoal, now you know. <laughs> if you have any more information about sumi and sumi practice, if you know where these color sticks came from and if they have any basis in traditional sumi work, let me know. I would love to find out more information because I don't speak Japanese. And the English language sites I can find are entirely centered around traditional black sumia painting. So I am working on an adventuring video for Thursday. I'm just waiting to hear back from some people about some history type stuff. Also, we got hit with a snowstorm, which wasn't as bad as they said it was going to be, but was still enough to keep me from being able to venture to the area that I really want to showcase. So we'll see if I have enough of the information together to get that out on Thursday. I'm really going to try. Otherwise, adventuring videos will start next week on Thursdays. If you like this, YouTube is suggesting something else that you might like that I did recently. And otherwise, I will see you next time. Don't forget to go art something today. Bye.